AT&T Inc. is an American multinational conglomerate holding company headquartered at Whitaker Tower in downtown Dallas, Texas. It is the world's largest telecommunications company, the largest provider of mobile telephone services, and the largest provider of fixed telephone services in the United States through AT&T Communications. Since June 14, 2018, it is also the parent company of mass media conglomerate WarnerMedia, making it the world's largest media and entertainment company in terms of revenue. As of 2018, AT&T is ranked number 9 on the Fortune 500 rankings of the largest United States corporations by total revenue. AT&T began its history as Southwestern Bell Telephone Company, a subsidiary of the Bell Telephone Company, founded by Alexander Graham Bell in 1880. The Bell Telephone Company evolved into American Telephone and Telegraph Company in 1885, which later rebranded as AT&T Corporation. The 1982 United States v. AT&T antitrust lawsuit resulted in the divestiture of AT&T Corporation's Ma Bell subsidiaries or regional Bell Operating Companies RBOCs, commonly referred to as Baby Bells, resulting in several independent companies, including Southwestern Bell Corporation. The latter changed its name to SBC Communications Inc. in 1995. In 2005, SBC purchased its former parent AT&T Corporation and took on its branding, with the merged entity naming itself AT&T Inc. and using its iconic logo and stock trading symbol. In 2006, AT&T Inc. acquired Bell South, the last independent baby Bell company, making their formerly joint venture Singular Wireless, which had acquired AT&T Wireless in 2004, wholly owned and rebranding it as AT&T Mobility. The current AT&T reconstitutes much of the former Bell system, and includes 10 of the original 22 Bell operating companies along with the original long-distance division. History Topic origin and growth 1885 to 1981 AT&T can trace its origin back to the original Bell Telephone Company founded by Alexander Graham Bell after his patenting of the telephone. One of that company's subsidiaries was American Telephone and Telegraph Company AT&T, established in 1885, which acquired the Bell Company on December 31, 1899, for legal reasons, leaving AT&T as the main company. AT&T established a network of subsidiaries in the United States and Canada that held a government-authorized phone service monopoly, formalized with the Kingsbury Commitment, throughout most of the 20th century. This monopoly was known as the Bell System, and during this period, AT&T was also known by the nickname Ma Bell. For periods of time, the former AT&T was the world's largest phone company. Topic breakup and Reformation 1982 to 2004. In 1982, US regulators broke up the AT&T monopoly, requiring AT&T to divest its regional subsidiaries and turning them each into individual companies. These new companies were known as regional Bell operating companies, or more informally, Baby Bells. AT&T continued to operate long-distance services, but as a result of this breakup, faced competition from new competitors such as MCI and Sprint. Southwestern Bell was one of the companies created by the breakup of AT&T Corp. 
The architect of divestiture for South Western Bell was Robert G. Pope. The company soon started a series of acquisitions. This includes the 1987 acquisition of Metromedia Mobile Business and the acquisition of several cable companies in the early 1990s. In the later half of the 1990s, the company acquired several other telecommunications companies, including some baby bells, while selling its cable business. During this time, the company changed its name to SBC Communications. By 1998, the company was in the top 15 of the Fortune 500, and by 1999 the company was part of the Dow Jones Industrial Average lasting through 2015. Topic purchase of former parent and acquisitions 2005 to 2014 In 2005 SBC purchased AT&T for 16 billion dollars After this purchase SBC adopted the better known AT&T name and brand with the original AT&T Corp still existing as the long distance landline subsidiary of the merged company the current AT&T claims the original AT&T Corp's history dating to 1885 as its own, though its corporate structure only dates from 1983. It also retains SBC's pre-2005 stock price history, and all regulatory filings prior to 2005 are for Southwestern Bell, SBC, not AT&T Corp. In September 2013, AT&T Inc. announced it would expand into Latin America through a collaboration with America Mobile. In December 2013, AT&T announced plans to sell its Connecticut wireline operations to Stamford-based Frontier Communications. Topic recent developments 2014 present AT&T purchased the Mexican carrier EUSACEL in late 2014 and 2 months later purchased the Mexican wireless business of NII Holdings merging the two companies to create AT&T Mexico in July 2015, AT&T purchased DirecTV for $48.5 billion, or $67.1 billion including assumed debt, subject to certain conditions. AT&T subsequently announced plans to converge its existing U-verse home internet and IPTV brands with DirecTV to create AT&T Entertainment in an effort to increase its media holdings. On October 22, 2016, AT&T announced a deal to buy Time Warner for $108.7 billion. AT&T also owns approximately a 2% stake in Canadian domiciled entertainment company Lionsgate. On July 13, 2017, it was reported that AT&T would introduce a cloud-based DVR streaming service as part of its effort to create a unified platform across DirecTV and its DirecTV Now streaming service, with Uverse to be added soon. In October 2018, it was announced that the service is set to launch in 2019. On September 12, 2017, it was reported that AT&T planned to launch a new cable TV-like service for delivery over the top over its own or a competitor's broadband network sometime next year. On November 20, 2017, Assistant Attorney General Macken Delrahim filed a lawsuit for the. United States Department of Justice Antitrust Division to block the merger with Time Warner, saying it will harm competition, result in higher bills for consumers and less innovation. In order for AT&T to fully acquire Time Warner, the Department of Justice stated that the company must divest either DirecTV or Turner Broadcasting System. As of 2017, AT&T is the world's largest telecommunications company. 
AT&T is also the second largest provider of mobile telephone services and the largest provider of fixed telephone services in the United States. On March 7, 2018, the company prepared to sell a minority stake of DirecTV Latin America through an IPO, creating a new holding company for those assets named VRIO Corp. However, on April 18, 2018, just a day before the public debut of VRIO, AT&T cancelled the IPO due to market conditions. On June 12, 2018, AT&T was given permission by US District Court Judge Richard J. Leon to go ahead with its $85 billion deal for Time Warner. The DOJ had attempted to stop the merger fearing it would harm competition. The merger closed two days after, becoming a wholly owned subsidiary and division of AT&T with a new name, WarnerMedia, announced the next day, three months after completing the acquisition, AT&T reorganized into four main units, communications, including consumer and business wireline telephony, AT&T mobility, and consumer entertainment video services, WarnerMedia, including Turner Cable Television Networks, Warner Bros. Film and Television Production, and HBO, AT&T Latin America, consisting of wireless service in Mexico and video in Latin America and the Caribbean under the VRIO brand, and advertising and analytics, since renamed XANDR. Topic AT&T Latin America AT&T Latin America formerly AT&T International Inc is a wholly owned division of AT&T which operates in Mexico and 11 countries in South America Topic history In 2017, AT&T announced a new AT&T International Corporate Division housing AT&T Mexico, DirecTV Latin America and their stakes of Sky Brazil and Sky Mexico. In October 2016, AT&T announced a deal to acquire Time Warner worth $85.4 billion, including assumed Time Warner debt. The proposed deal would give AT&T significant holdings in the media industry. AT&T's competitor Comcast had previously acquired NBC Universal in a similar bid to increase its media holdings in concert with its ownership of television and internet providers. If approved by federal regulators, the merger would bring Time Warner's properties under the same umbrella as AT&T's telecommunication holdings, including satellite provider DirecTV. By the end of July, the company announced that, effective August 1, a new structure was created before the acquisition would close. On September 15, 2017, Reuters reported, citing anonymous sources, that AT&T, the owner of DIRECTV's U.S. and Latin American divisions, had hired an advisor to consider offering AT&T Latin America on the public stock market. In November 2017, the U.S. Justice Department said it was moving to sue to block the AT&T Time Warner merger. On November 20, 2017, the Department of Justice filed an antitrust lawsuit over the acquisition. Macken Delrahim stated that the deal would greatly harm American consumers. AT&T asserts that this suit is a radical and inexplicable departure from decades of antitrust precedent. On December 22, 2017, the merger agreement deadline was extended to June 21, 2018. On April 19, 2018, the IPO was cancelled. On June 12, 2018, the AT&T Time Warner merger was approved by a federal judge. Two days later, AT&T completed the acquisition of Time Warner, and a day later the company was renamed WarnerMedia. 
On September 21, 2018, AT&T reclassified its four principal divisions which includes AT&T International which now have some assets moved out like the RSNs, and also merging Consumer Mobility, Technology and Business Mobility and renamed the company as AT&T Latin America. Topic landline operating companies Of the eight companies that were part of the breakup of the Bell system, these five are a part of the current AT&T, Ameritech, acquired by SBC in 1999 AT&T Corp., acquired by SBC in 2005 Bell South, acquired by AT&T in 2006 Pacific Telesis, acquired by SBC in 1997 Southwestern Bell, rebranded as SBC Communications in 1995, acquired AT&T Corporation and rebranded as AT&T Inc. in 2005. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Chart of Baby Bells. Topic former operating companies The following companies have become defunct or were sold under SBC, AT&T ownership, Southern New England Telephone, sold to Frontier Communications in 2014 Woodbury Telephone, merged into Southern New England Telephone on June 1, 2007. Topic future of rural landlines AT&T stated that it would declare the intentions for its rural landlines on November 7, 2012. AT&T had previously announced that it was considering a sale of its rural landlines, which are not wired for AT&T's U-verse service, however, it has also stated that it may keep the business after all, AT&T was not the first baby bell to sell off rural landlines. Ameritech sold some of its Wisconsin lines to CenturyTel in 1998, Bell South sold some of its lines to Mebtel in the 2000s, U.S. West sold many historically Bell landlines to Lynch Communications and Pacific Telecom in the 1990s, Verizon sold many of its New England lines to Fairpoint in 2008 and its West Virginia operations to Frontier Communications in 2010. On October 25, 2014, Frontier Communications took over control of the AT&T landline network in Connecticut after being approved by state utility regulators. The deal was worth about $2 billion, and included Frontier inheriting about 2,500 of AT&T's employees and many of AT&T's buildings. Topic: Corporate structure. Topic: Facilities and regions. The company is headquartered at Whitaker Tower in downtown Dallas, Texas. On June 27, 2008, AT&T announced that it would move its corporate headquarters from downtown San Antonio to one AT&T Plaza in downtown Dallas. The company said that it moved to gain better access to its customers and operations throughout the world, and to the key technology partners, suppliers, innovation and human resources needed as it continues to grow, domestically and internationally. AT&T Inc. previously relocated its corporate headquarters to San Antonio from St. Louis, Missouri, in 1992, when it was then named Southwestern Bell Corporation. The company's telecom operations group, which serves residential and regional business customers in 22 U.S. states, remains in San Antonio. Atlanta, Georgia, continues to be the headquarters for AT&T Mobility, with significant offices in Redmond, Washington, the former home of AT&T Wireless. 
Bedminster, New Jersey, is the headquarters for the company's Global Business Services Group and AT&T Labs, and is where the original AT&T Corp. remains located. St. Louis continues as home to the company's directory operations, AT&T Advertising Solutions, AT&T offers also services in many locations throughout the Asia-Pacific, its regional headquarters is located in Hong Kong. The company is also active in Mexico, and it was announced on November 7, 2014, that Mexican carrier EUSACEL is being acquired by AT&T. The acquisition was approved in January 2015. On April 30, 2015, AT&T acquired wireless operations Nextel Mexico from NII Holdings now AT&T Mexico. Topic Corporate Governance AT&T's current board of directors as of May 2019, the current management as of May 2019 includes, Randall L. Stevenson, Chief Executive Officer CEO, Angela Santone Chief Administrative Officer CAO, William A. Blase Jr. Senior Executive Vice President of Human Resources John J. Stevens, Senior Executive Vice President President and Chief Financial Officer CFO David S. Huntley, Senior Executive Vice President and Chief Compliance Officer David R. McCatty II, Senior Executive Vice President and General Counsel Lori Lee, CEO of AT&T Latin America and Global Marketing Officer Brian Lesser, CEO of XANDR and AT&T Services, Inc. John Donovan, CEO of AT&T Communications John Stankey, CEO of WarnerMedia Topic political involvement According to the Center for Responsive Politics, as of 2018, AT&T is the 15th largest donor to United States political campaigns, and was the top American corporate donor in 2011, having contributed more than $47.7 million since 1990, 56% of which went to Republicans and 44% of which went to Democrats. As an example, in 2005, AT&T was among 53 entities that contributed the maximum of $250,000 to the second inauguration of President George W. Bush. Bill Lay, representing AT&T, sits on the Private Enterprise Board of the American Legislative Exchange Council ALEC. ALEC is a non-profit organization of conservative state legislators and private sector representatives that drafts and shares model state-level legislation for distribution among state governments in the United States. During the period of 1998 to 2010, the company expended $130 million on lobbying in the United States. A key political issue for AT&T has been the question of which businesses win the right to profit by providing broadband Internet access in the United States. The company has also lobbied in support of several federal bills. AT&T supported the Federal Communications Commission Process Reform Act of 2013 H.R. 3675, 113th Congress, a bill that would make a number of changes to procedures that the U.S. Federal Communications Commission FCC follows in its rulemaking processes. The FCC would have to act in a more transparent way as a result of this bill, forced to accept public input about regulations. AT&T's Executive Vice President of Federal Relations, Tim McConey, said that the bill's much-needed institutional reforms will help arm the agency with the tools to keep pace with the Internet speed of today's marketplace. 
It will also ensure that outmoded regulatory practices for today's competitive marketplace are properly placed in the dustbin of history. In May 2018, reports emerged that AT&T made 12 monthly payments between January and December 2017 to Essential Consultants, a company set up by President Donald Trump's lawyer Michael Cohen, totaling $600,000. Although initial reports on May 8 mentioned only four monthly payments totaling $200,000, documents obtained by The Washington Post on May 10 confirmed the figure of 12 payments, which had begun three days after the president was sworn into office. AT&T confirmed the report the same day. The report from The Washington Post, as well as additional reporting from Bloomberg, revealed the payments had been made for Cohen to provide guidance relating to the attempted $85 billion merger with Time Warner, to gain information on the Trump administration's planned tax reforms, as well as about potential changes to net neutrality policies under the new FCC. However, chairman of the FCC Ajit Pai denied Cohen ever inquired about net neutrality on AT&T's behalf. A spokesperson for AT&T said that the company had been contacted by the special counsel investigation led by Robert Mueller regarding the payments, and had provided all the information requested in November and December 2017. In early 2019, the Democratic House Judiciary requested records related to the AT&T Time Warner merger from the White House. Topic. Historical financial performance The financial performance of the company is reported to shareholders on an annual basis and a matter of public record. The unit except where noted is billions of U.S. dollars. Where performance has been restated, the most recent statement of performance from an annual report is used. Topic: Criticism and controversies. Topic: Hemisphere Database. The company maintains a database of call detail records of all telephone calls that have passed through its network since 1987. AT&T employees work at high-intensity drug trafficking area offices, operated by the Office of National Drug Control Policy in Los Angeles, Atlanta and Houston so data can be quickly turned over to law enforcement agencies. Records are requested via administrative subpoena, without the involvement of a court or grand jury. Topic censorship In September 2007, AT&T changed its legal policy to state that AT&T may immediately terminate or suspend all or a portion of your service, any member ID, electronic mail address, IP address, universal resource locator or domain name used by you, without notice for conduct that AT&T believes, c tends to damage the name or reputation reputation of AT&T, or its parents, affiliates and subsidiaries. By October 10, 2007, AT&T had altered the terms and conditions for its Internet service to explicitly support freedom of expression by its subscribers, after an outcry claiming the company had given itself the right to censor its subscribers' transmissions. Section 5.1 of AT&T's new terms of service now reads AT&T respects freedom of expression and believes it is a foundation of our free society to express differing points of view. AT&T will not terminate, disconnect or suspend service because of the views you or we express on public policy matters, political issues or political campaigns. 
Topic privacy controversy In 2006, the Electronic Frontier Foundation lodged a class action lawsuit, Hepting v. AT&T, which alleged that AT&T had allowed agents of the National Security Agency to monitor phone and Internet communications of AT&T customers without warrants. If true, this would violate the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act of 1978 and the First and Fourth Amendments of the U.S. Constitution. AT&T has yet to confirm or deny that monitoring by the NSA is occurring. In April 2006, a retired former AT&T technician, Mark Klein, lodged an affidavit supporting this allegation. The Department of Justice has stated it will intervene in this lawsuit by means of state secrets privilege. In July 2006, the United States District Court for the Northern District of California, in which the suit was filed, rejected a federal government motion to dismiss the case. The motion to dismiss, which invoked the state secrets privilege, had argued that any court review of the alleged partnership between the federal government and AT&T would harm national security. The case was immediately appealed to the Ninth Circuit. It was dismissed on June 3, 2009, citing retroactive legislation in the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. In May 2006, USA Today reported that all international and domestic calling records had been handed over to the National Security Agency by AT&T, Verizon, SBC, and BellSouth for the purpose of creating a massive calling database. The portions of the new AT&T that had been part of SBC Communications before November 18, 2005, were not mentioned. On June 21, 2006, the San Francisco Chronicle reported that AT&T had rewritten rules on its privacy policy. The policy, which took effect June 23, 2006, says that AT&T, not customers, owns customers' confidential info and can use it to protect its legitimate business interests, safeguard others, or respond to legal process. On August 22, 2007, National Intelligence Director Mike McConnell confirmed that AT&T was one of the telecommunications companies companies that assisted with the government's warrantless wire tapping program on calls between foreign and domestic sources on November 8, 2007, Mark Klein, a former AT&T technician, told Keith Olbermann of MSNBC that all internet traffic passing over AT&T lines was copied into a locked room at the company's San Francisco office, to which only employees with national security agency clearance had access, AT&T keeps for five to seven years a record of who text messages whom and the date and time, but not the content of the messages. AT&T has a one-star privacy rating from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Topic intellectual property filtering In January 2008, the company reported plans to begin filtering all Internet traffic which passes through its network for intellectual property violations. Commentators in the media have speculated that if this plan is implemented, it would lead to a mass exodus of subscribers leaving AT&T, although this is misleading as Internet traffic may go through the company's network anyway. Internet freedom proponents used these developments as justification for government-mandated network neutrality.
Topic discrimination against local public access television channels AT&T is accused by community media groups of discriminating against local public, educational, and government access PEG cable TV channels, by impictions that will severely restrict the audience, according to Barbara Popovich, executive director of the Chicago Public Access Service CAN TV, the new AT&T U-verse system forces all public access television into a special menu system, denying normal functionality such as channel numbers, access to the standard program guide, and DVR recording. The Ratepayer Advocates Division of the California Public Utilities Commission reported, instead of putting the stations on individual channels, AT&T has bundled community stations into a generic channel that can only be navigated through a complex and lengthy process. Sue Buskey, president of telecommunications consulting firm The Buskey Group and a former head of the National Federation of Local Cable Programmers, Alliance for Community Media argue that this is an overall attack on public access across the United States, the place in the dial around cities and communities where people can make their own media in their own communities. Topic information security In June 2010, a hacker group known as Goetze Security discovered a vulnerability within AT&T that could allow anyone to uncover email addresses belonging to customers of AT&T 3G service for the Apple iPad. These email addresses could be accessed without a protective password. Using a script, Goetze Security collected thousands of email addresses from AT&T. Goetze Security informed AT&T about the security flaw through a third party. Goetze Security then disclosed around 114,000 of these emails to Gorka Media, which published an article about the security flaw and disclosure in Valleywag. Praetorian Security Group criticized the web application that Goetze Security exploited as poorly designed. In April 2015, AT&T was fined $25 million over data security breaches, marking the largest ever fine issued by the Federal Communications Commission (FCC) for breaking data privacy laws. The investigation revealed the theft of details of approximately 280,000 people from call centers in Mexico, Colombia and the Philippines. Topic accusations of enabling fraud In March 2012, the United States federal government announced a lawsuit against AT&T. The specific accusations state that AT&T violated the False Claims Act by facilitating and seeking federal payment for IP relay calls by international callers who were ineligible for the service and sought to use it for fraudulent purposes. The complaint alleges that, out of fears that fraudulent call volume would drop after the registration deadline, AT&T knowingly adopted a non-compliant registration system that did not verify whether the user was located within the United States. The complaint further contends that AT&T continued to employ this system even with the knowledge that it facilitated use of IP relay by fraudulent foreign callers, which accounted for up to 95% of AT&T's call volume. The government's complaint alleges that AT&T improperly billed the TRS fund for reimbursement of these calls and received millions of dollars in federal payments as a result. Topic racism On April 28, 2015, AT&T announced that it had fired Aaron Slater, president of content and advertising sales, for sending racist text messages. Slater was also hit with a $100 million discrimination lawsuit, filed by African-American employee Noemi King. 
The day before that, protesters arrived at AT&T's headquarters in Dallas and its satellite offices in Los Angeles as well as at the home of CEO Randall Stevenson to protest alleged systemic racial policies. According to accounts, the protesters are demanding AT&T begin working with 100% black-owned media companies. Topic trademark violation In June 2016, Citigroup sued AT&T for trademark infringement, false designation of origin, and unfair competition. The company had recently established a loyalty program under the brand AT&T Thanks, which Citigroup claims would cause consumer confusion as an infringement of its thank you and City thank you marks due to similar wording and visual design. City, which also provides a co-branded credit card for AT&T that links with its Thank You Rewards program, sought unspecified damages and the expungement of AT&T's trademark registration. The suit was dismissed in August 2016, with a judge ruling that there was a low likelihood of confusion between the two marks because the companies fall within different industries, and that consumers who use loyalty programs would be able to clearly take into account the attributes associated with the products they purchase and, thus, be able to distinguish them. <laughs> Naming rights and sponsorships Topic Buildings Whitaker Tower 1 AT&T Plaza Corporate Headquarters, Dallas, Texas AT&T 220 Building, Building in Indianapolis, Indiana AT&T Building, Building in Detroit, Michigan AT&T Building, Building in Indianapolis, Indiana AT&T Building, Building in Kingman, Arizona AT&T Building aka The Batman Building in Nashville, Tennessee Tennessee AT&T Building, Building in Omaha, Nebraska AT&T Building Edition, Building in Detroit, Michigan AT&T Building, Building in San Diego AT&T Center, Building in Los Angeles AT&T Center, Building in St. Louis, Missouri AT&T City Center, Building in Birmingham, Alabama AT&T Corporate Center, Building in Chicago, Illinois AT&T Huron Road Building, Building in Cleveland, Ohio AT&T Lenox Park Campus, AT&T Mobility Headquarters in DeKalb County just outside Atlanta, Georgia AT&T Midtown Center, Building in Atlanta, Georgia AT&T Switching Center Center, Building in Los Angeles AT&T Switching Center, Building in Oakland, California AT&T Switching Center, Building in San Francisco AT&T Tower, Building in Minneapolis, Minnesota AT&T Building, Building in Meriden, CT AT&T Entertainment Group HQ, Direct TV Corporate Campus in El Segundo, California. Topic venues AT&T Center, San Antonio, Texas, formerly SBC Center, AT&T Field, Chattanooga, Tennessee, formerly Bell South Park, AT&T Plaza, Chicago, Illinois, public space that hosts the Cloud Gate sculpture in Millennium Park, AT&T Plaza, Dallas, Texas, Plaza in front of the American Airlines Center at Victory Park, AT&T Performing Arts Center, Dallas, Texas AT&T Stadium, Arlington, Texas formerly Dallas Cowboys Stadium Jones AT&T Stadium, Lubbock, Texas formerly Clifford B. and Audrey Jones Stadium, Jones SBC Stadium TPC San Antonio, San Antonio, Texas AT&T Oaks Course and AT&T Canyons Course War Memorial Stadium, AT&T Field, Little Rock, Arkansas
Topic sponsorships AT&T Byron Nelson, Irving, Texas Golf AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic formerly Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic, Southwestern Bell Cotton Bowl Classic, SBC Cotton Bowl Classic played in Arlington, Texas, at AT&T Stadium Football AT&T National, Washington, D.C. Golf AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am Golf AT&T Red River Rivalry Dallas Texas formerly Red River Shootout SBC Red River Rivalry Football Major League Soccer and the United States Soccer Federation including the US men's and US women's national teams and the Major League Soccer All-Star Game from 2009 Mexico National Football Team United States Olympic Team National Collegiate Athletic Association Corporate Champion AT&T American Cup Artistic Gymnastics Competition Sponsored by AT&T since 2011 Red Bull Racing Formula 1 Racing Team Technical Support and Sponsorship since 2011 Cloud9 Sponsorship since March 2019 equals equals see also